Noritoshi Kamo's potential is just absolutely crazy, to the point that it could even surpass Yuta's and Megumi's. Now before I break down why his potential is so crazy, which has to do with the blood manipulation technique, first I should actually break down just how strong he currently is, and also shout out to all the special grade and honored one members of the channel. So Noritoshi Kamo is a third year student who's currently a semi grade 1 sorcerer. Now the interesting thing to note is that Jujutsu Kaisen, I guess I should say Jujutsu High specifically, doesn't actually accurately measure the student's power, and this can be seen in many examples, like Megumi, Yuji, and Nobara are all inaccurately graded, and this goes along with Panda as well. Though of course, Maki being grade 4 doesn't make sense, but we know that was because the Zenin clan was interfering with that. Though you could argue that all of these students were being recommended to become grade 1 sorcerers or at least semi grade 1, so it is possible that I could be reaching with the Kamo statement. The reason I say it might be an inaccurate measure of his power is that what we saw in his Naoya fight was extremely impressive. I mean, this is just next level durability and reaction speed. Now I know he's not actually doing anything against Naoya. Well, actually that's not true. He had some great strategies where he spat his blood inside of Naoya, right through his hole, and he also hit him with the piercing blood but you could argue that the reason this was is because he was literally taking crucial hits and pretty much doing suicide attacks just to get some good hits on Naoya. But still, it's extremely impressive that he just didn't die from one hit from Naoya. Now, we know for a fact that he's definitely weaker than Choso at the very least, and Choso is someone who scales pretty well against Megumi and Yuji. I would say all three of them are incredibly close in terms of power, like insanely close actually. And we know that for a fact because when he saw Choso charging the Convergence, he literally says that it's incredible that someone can even charge it this quickly. Or I think the exact wording was charged this much of it. And of course, this also gets into the fact that Choso's blood is poisonous for humans, so Choso does fare better against sorcerers, though in defense of Noritoshi, his blood is poisonous for curses. So Noritoshi is actually well suited to fight curses, not humans. But on the flip side, because Choso is a death painting groom, he can actually convert his cursed energy into blood, which is incredibly useful because he can just make tsunamis of blood. Where on the other hand, Kamo can't actually do this. He's limited to the blood in his body or to the blood that he carries around. So sometimes he has like a blood bag and this is what he's using to fight. So it's a very limited amount of blood. Now, of course, it's pretty interesting because even the data book says that Kamo didn't need to actually become a Jujutsu High student because he actually has the famed and prized technique of the Kamo clan, the blood manipulation. He would have actually just become grade one eventually had he just never gone to Jujutsu High since he was the hair of the Kamo clan, or I guess I should say former hair right now, since Kenjaku stole his place in Hoden. But it does says a lot about his character, as the day books even say that he still went to Jujutsu High for these three years just to do things the proper way, and obviously because he wants to build a good reputation for himself or his mother specifically though. But I digress because this isn't a video about his character, but more so about his potential of his technique and of course, explaining the blood manipulation and the potential of that technique, which is crazy, I'll get into it. But roughly, yes, that's about how strong Kamo is. Now, do I think he's semi-grade 1 level right now? I would say absolutely not. I would say at the bare minimum, he's low-tier grade 1, maybe mid-tier grade 1. I don't want to give him high-tier grade 1. Actually, I just realized, if you don't actually power scale Jujutsu Kaisen, you wouldn't know what these mean. But at the very least, I want to say that he's stronger than semi-grade 1. And obviously, I know he did really bad against Hanami and Goodwill, and this is pretty bad because this was a base Hanami. And a base Hanami, we didn't even get the amps after fighting Toto and Yuji. But it has been a while since the Goodwill arc happened, so you could just make the argument that since then he's gotten stronger, he's been training, blah blah blah, which goes in line extremely well with his character because of the type of person he is. After getting his ass beat by Hanami, it would be very, very weird if he hadn't been training or trying to get stronger after having lost that badly. So I know this is a bit headcanony, but it goes incredibly in line with his character, and also it's the only thing that would actually make sense and explain why he's so much more powerful than he was in the Goodwill. So yeah, he's quite the fighter. And now that I've broken down just how strong he currently is, let me actually explain his potential, but I guess more specifically the potential of his technique. Think about this, Kamo is literally a bastard son from a mistress, yet just from his technique alone, he is literally the heir to the clan, not including this whole Kenjaku nonsense, because this is just a very very unique and unfortunate case, but obviously had Kenjaku never existed and all of this nonsense hadn't happened of Kenjaku, Noritoshi Kamo would literally have been the head of the clan. And you have to ask, why is this the case? Because we've seen in Jujutsu Kaisen, this world really prioritizes nobility, prestige, family ties, and all these things. So why is it someone who's literally a bastard son, and is someone Someone that is moving like Jon Snow, the hair of the clan by default. The reason that this is the case is because he inherited one of the strongest techniques in all of Jujutsu Kaisen, the blood manipulation technique. As we know in Jujutsu Kaisen, how strong you can get is actually determined by your innate talent. Literally 80% of your whole potential is literally bogged down to that. It doesn't matter how much you train, it doesn't matter how dedicated you are, you could spend every single day of your life training and that could only equate to 20% of your power, which is just really unlucky I guess. So when someone has such a prized technique like the blood manipulation technique, best believe he is making the absolute most of that 80%. He's getting all 80%. So unlike a lot of characters, let's say Nanami, who trained incredibly hard, yet he did reach his peak, as he said. He can't even make a domain expansion because he just doesn't have the talent for it. Even after all of his gruesome training and years of working on it. Let's say Nanami was 20% training, so he maxed out the training and trained as hard as he ever could in his life. And then let's say it's 20% talent, which is something he just has no control of. That would mean Nanami could only reach 40% of his true potential, which is still very strong. As you can see, he's a high tier grade 1 sorcerer. But in terms of modern 
modern day sorcerers, he's on that high tier echelon. And you could even argue this is the case for a lot of the sorcerers in the current Jujutsu Kaisen world. Characters like Naobito, Naoya, Jinichi, Ogi, where they were given pretty good techniques, but because these techniques had a ceiling or a limit, they could just never reach 100% of their potential. And remember, this is why techniques like the Ten Shadows technique is so prized. Not only can you reach 100% of your potential, as you can get domain expansions and maximums incredibly easily just through sheer talent alone, you can even go beyond its 100% potential, which is crazy. As Megami's incomplete domain alone, yes, incomplete domain, surpasses far beyond 100% and takes him to 120%. As we've seen of characters like Gojo, Six Eyes and Limitless are just so powerful, it goes well beyond 100%, and it just makes him too powerful. The blood manipulation has the exact same potential as these two. As in the lore itself, these three techniques should all be rivaling each other. As this is a clan rivalry that has been going on for many centuries, possibly even going past a thousand years, to be honest. And not only that, these techniques are so powerful that they have kept these three clans as the top clans for the past hundreds of years and have made these clans relevant throughout all of history, all the way to the modern day, which says a lot about these techniques. So obviously in lore alone, we know that the blood manipulation should be rivaling the Ten Shadows and the Six Eyes and Limitless, which is absolutely crazy. And in terms of innate talent, 100% Norotoshi Kamo should have the potential to unlock domain expansion and even a maximum technique, since of course his technique is prized for that reason. Remember, this guy is a bastard son, but just from having this technique alone, he's instantly made to the hair of the clan, so that in the future he would literally be the leader just because of his technique, because it is that pride and has that much potential. Now let me actually break down on some theories about why I think this is the case. Obviously the theory that I think is the best is that his domain expansion is just going to be absolutely crazy. And I mean even if it's not complete and an incomplete version like Megami. So let's say it's the incomplete version so it's not even the max potential of his domain expansion. And it's just something like Megami where it just makes your overall ability stronger but you don't have any sure hits yet. Even if it was just an incomplete domain like that, it would still be far stronger than Megami. Which is saying something. This has to do with just how limited he is in his base form though. Because in his base form he just has such a limited amount of blood that it really holds back on how strong he could be in base. Which Megami kind of doesn't actually have this issue. But if he activates his domain expansion, let's say his domain expansion just creates a pool of blood, or if it's like a crimson moon domain expansion or something. At the bare minimum, the ground of the domain, all of the walls and the ceiling of the whole domain would literally be made of blood, and he would just be getting a massive supply of blood, to the point where it's literally just a limitless supply of blood. Kind of like how Megami's domain is just shadows all around his opponent, above, below, and all around them, so he can spawn Shikigami from every angle. This would literally be Kamo, but with blood. Now imagine, not only does he no longer have the limit of just like one tiny blood bag, or the blood that he's bled in a fight, he is now pretty much got access to an infinite amount of blood. So you can only imagine just how much stronger this has already made. Whether a blood bag's worth of blood, he is easily, at the very least, I think grade one level, or he's doing pretty well against this insane version of Naoya. Imagine if he just had a limitless amount of blood, and the top all of that off, the blood is beneath and on top of and surrounding his opponents. He could literally shoot convergences from under you, from on top of you, from the side, or he can just make spikes of blood just spam into you. And we saw just how incredibly defensive that tiny bag of blood could be. Imagine if now he just has a cocoon of blood around him and it's far denser than normal. Or if you try to attack him, just a massive dense wall of blood comes to block that. Which is incredible because a tiny amount of blood was able to block Naoya's punch and make it so Norotoshi didn't take any damage. Just imagine an actual wall and an incredibly dense one just surrounding him if you ever try to hit him. It's just such a powerful domain, even at its incomplete state. Because remember, this is just the incomplete version that I'm talking about. I'm not even saying his sure hit technique. His sure hit technique could be absolutely crazy. At the bare minimum, the sure hit of this domain would be stronger than the convergence and even the supernova, because this is a domain sure hit technique. It could just be something like the convergences, which he can now spam, would just be coming all around his opponents. And I guess they could just track his opponent, which is something the actual convergence can't do. So the convergence is guaranteed to hit the opponent. And of course, it would be stronger because now there's just an insane amount of blood to build up for this convergence. And of course, he doesn't need to do this with his own hands. The domain will do this for him. So while he's fighting his opponents, the domain will just be spamming convergences, which are far stronger than normal, far faster than normal, and they'll also be tracking his opponents. And that's the weakest version of what his sure hit could be. His sure hit could be something way stronger than even that. Now, I think you're beginning to see why Kamo could easily be special grade level if he just gets a domain. Now, imagine if he gets reverse curse technique. If he gets reverse curse technique, this whole issue of him having a limited amount of blood and base is just gone, actually. Because now he can just keep making blood. So if he gets reverse curse technique, his base would just become so powerful it's crazy because he could literally just have pools of blood come out of his body like Choso did and his blood will just heal up. And obviously this is beside the fact that reverse curse technique just helps you so much in battle because now you can heal from wounds. It's just absolutely crazy. And another theory is that it's possible that maybe he could make his blood poisonous even though it's human blood. So it's not blood like Choso's which had curse mixed in it. But people theorize that perhaps he could actually transform his blood's property to be poisonous. Now out of everything I've said, this is something that's the most unlikely but it is a possibility and it's pretty OP, so I did want to bring it up. And then of course his maxim. I mean his maxim could be something absolutely crazy. I mean his convergence is already so powerful. Just imagine what his maxim could be. I mean one of my own theories that I've 
thought of is it's probably like boiling blood or something. Well, I guess blood can't boil, but hey, this is an anime in manga world. They're using fictional powers and all this magic nonsense. So we can bend the rules of reality a bit. And maybe he could make steaming hot boiling blood. I don't know. These are all just theories. But regardless of what it could be, he definitely has a high amount of potential. Now, of course, you could argue that Megumi has Mahoroga, so obviously he has more potential than Norotoshi, which is a very, very fair argument. And again, that's why in the beginning I did say it was just a maybe. But still, I mean, his domain expansion is looking to be far more deadly and useful than Megumi's. And I mean comparing their incomplete states. So of course, Megumi's does have that spine in his Chimera Shadow God, which could be a near the Shikigami, or it could be some giant skeleton when his domain's fully formed. Okay, now I'm just getting into Megumi theories. That's a whole other video for another day, right? But it is pretty crazy. His potential, at the very least, we can say rivals that of Megumi's. Though it is very odd how Naruto Shikamo is in his third year, and he still hasn't unlocked any of these things yet, while Megumi is still going on in his first year, already has a pretty refined and pretty strong incomplete domain. I guess the argument to this is that Megumi has just been in some incredibly tough fights, and he's just been pushed to this brink. Because unfortunately, or I guess fortunately for Megumi, because he's around Sukuna, or more specifically Yuji, this, as we know, attracts a lot of cursed spirits. And very strong cursed spirits, as you've seen many special grade cursed spirits. All of the special grade battles that Megumi has, has literally been because of Yuji and Sukuna. I mean, look at Hanami, they were attacking because of Yuji and Sukuna and all getting into Tengen's barrier because they wanted to get the fingers from Jujutsu Hai. Look at the very first special grade, the first finger barrier. That only happened because the higher-ups wanted to kill Yuji. Or when Megami fought Sukuna, that was literally because of Yuji. Or even in the end of season one where he finally unlocks his domain, that again was a finger barrier who in Sukuna's own words, all of that happened because of Sukuna and because Yuji was the vessel. So yes, you could easily make the argument that the only reason Megami is this powerful in his first year is because he has been put in these life and death battles against all these special grades, specifically because he's been hanging around Yuji and Sukuna, as I'm very sure that Kamo has not had all of these crazy battles. And you've even seen, because of the Hanami fight, Norotoshi is a lot stronger after the Goodwill arc, because once you get beat that badly, you can see that you're weak and you want to get stronger and he's been training since then. And we literally know that's the whole reason why Megumi got stronger, because he got his ass beat against all these characters. It's what led him to get that domain expansion. And it's literally what's leading him to keep getting stronger as he's in Shibuya. And then even in the Cullen game, he's just had these incredibly tough life and death fights. And compare this to Norotoshi, who in his years in Jujutsu Ha has probably been going on missions that was suited for his rank. So he's not had to face any special grades or even grade ones maybe. So yes, I know Megami is far stronger right now than Norotoshi, but that is because of all of these situations that Megami has been put in as one of the main characters. I guarantee you had Yuji never existed, Megami never would have gotten his domain expansion his first year. Had Shibuya never happened, had the Cullen game never happened, had all of these special grade fights because of Yuji never happened, Megami probably would have gone along the same lines as Norotoshi and he probably would have eventually become grade one in his third year. So that's just in defense of Norotoshi come. And this is no sly against Megami to make it out of all these fights alive and to get this strong all in your first year is very impressive. But he's very lucky and also unlucky at the same time to have had all of these tough fights because it makes him this strong. Whereas Norotoshi Kamo didn't. But yeah, those are my opinions on Norotoshi Kamo and his potential and also the potential of the blood manipulation specifically. I guess this kind of does apply to Choso as well, doesn't it? But if you enjoyed the video, please do be sure to subscribe. I have a ton of videos just like this on the channel. A lot of what ifs, theories, power scaling versus battles, discussions, and the whole bunch. And of course, thank you to all the members of the channel. You guys make these videos possible, so thank you. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about this topic and all of that in the comments of this video because I'm actually really curious and what abilities do you think Kamo could have in the future? What do you think his domain would actually look like if you disagree with my interpretation? What do you think his sure hit will be? What do you think his maximum will be? And how strong do you think he's going to get by the end of the series? I think if there is a time skip by the end of the series, I actually think he's going to be a special grade sorcerer. But I think that's if there's a couple years time skip after the end of the series. But yeah, if you've made it this far, you're an absolute legend. And if you did subscribe, you remember the Higuruma fan club. And that's all from me. Take care and have a nice day.